In the last lesson, we got the ORM and the DI container set up and working with SlimPHP. In this video, we're going to refactor the public index.php so that we don't do all of these things in here. I want to have a config file for the routes, I want to have a config file for the container bindings, and so on. The first thing that I want to do is that I want to move these path constants out of here into its own config file. So we'll create a new configs directory and we'll create the path constants php file within it. Let's then move these constants out of here into the path constants and we'll simply require this file in here. Next, I want to store the container bindings in its own config file. So I want to basically move these things into its own config file. So we'll again open the project files. We'll create a PHP file called container bindings. And this file will simply return a list of bindings. So we need to return an array that will contain our container bindings. Then we're going to move these bindings from here into container bindings. And we want to return a key value pair. So this would be the key and this would be the value. So we'll take this, put it here, and then we'll take this and put it here. Let's import all of these things. Then we'll take the entity manager and we'll take its value and put it here. Let's also import these classes and let's go back to the public index. And now we need to register these bindings somehow in the container. Now we could require these bindings into a variable and then loop over that variable because it's essentially an array and then set each binding manually like this. Or we could simply also add a list of entries to the container. We've actually been using the PHPDI's pre-configured container by simply creating the container instance this way. However, we can change the options and configure the container to match our needs by using a container builder class. So we'll simply replace this with container builder. Let's call the variable container builder as well. Then we can call add definitions method to register our container bindings. And this method accepts an array that contains a list of bindings, or it can also accept a path to a PHP file that returns list of bindings. So we'll simply pass the path to our container bindings config file. Then to actually get the container instance, we can simply call the build method, which returns the container instance. So we can assign this to a container variable and everything should work as expected. So let's open the browser and test it out. We'll go to localhost port 8000 and sure enough, the home page loads. Let's go to the invoices page and sure enough, invoices page loads as well. We can further improve this by extracting this container definition logic into its own config file. So let's create a new config file here called container.php and we're going to take all of this and paste it here and instead of assigning we can simply return the container instance and within the index.php we'll simply require that container config file and assign it to container variable. Let's refresh the page to make sure that it still works and sure enough it does. So we've extracted the container logic and definitions in their own files. That way we can properly organize things, we can configure container as needed within the container.php and we can add more definitions as needed within the container bindings.php or we can even create an additional container bindings config file that maybe has definitions for other sets of classes and simply add the definitions in here. This is a good way to stay organized because now this file deals with building proper container instance. The container can also be compiled to maximize the performance, which basically means cached and is recommended for production. For development, we don't really need to do that, but if you're curious, it can be done by simply calling the method called enable compilation and pass the path to the cache directory. We'll probably do that once we actually work on the project. Next, I want to move the routing out of here and put it into its own routes config file. So let's create a new config file here called routes.php and we're going to take this and move it right here. Let's import these controllers 
And as you can see, we have a problem here because we don't have app object defined. There is no app variable in here. And I do not want to use globals or include another file to access the app object. Instead, I want to somehow have access to this app object and have the routes registered this way. One thing we can do is that what if we had something like a closure that accepts the app object as an argument and then within this closure we would register all the routes. We can simply return the closure and then we'll call this function from the index.php and simply pass the app object. So we'll go to the index.php and we'll require the routes config file here and assign it to a router variable. Then after the app object has been created, we'll simply call the router function because as you remember, this returns a closure function and we'll pass the app object as an argument. Let's refresh the page to make sure that everything still works. And sure enough, the page still loads. I think we can do better here. This twig logic right here can also be extracted somewhere else. We don't want to deal with this within public index.php. Now we did something similar to the entity manager in the container bindings right here. So why don't we do the same for the twig object as well. This will also allow us to inject the twig instance within controller constructor. Right now we are getting the twig instance from the request using this from request method. And that is fine in certain cases, but I prefer to inject dependencies in constructors. So instead I want to inject twig instance in the constructor like this. Then we'll take this away from here and simply replace it to this twig. Let's add the return type here and seems like we can mark this as read only. Now let's do the same thing in the invoice controller. So we'll do it right here. Let's mark this as read only as well. And we'll replace this with this twig. Now this will not work, of course. If I refresh the page, we're going to get an error that it cannot resolve the twig class because it has some dependencies that cannot be resolved. So auto wiring cannot work in this case simply because the twig class within the constructor has some dependencies that cannot be automatically resolved. So what we can do is that we can simply do the same thing we did with the entity manager. So we'll go here and we'll take this and register twig class and we'll simply return the twig instance within the closure this way. Let's import the twig class and we also need to bring in this extension here. Let's import that as well. And in the public index.php, we can simply access the twig instance by using container because we have the container right here. So we can do container get twig class. Let's test this out to make sure that it works. Let's refresh the page and sure enough, we're back to normal. Let's go to home page and that works as well. Now there is one more thing that I want to fix in the container bindings for the twig. We're kind of hard coding this auto reload right here to true. Instead, I want to store that in the configuration so that we can access it from the config file because we should only care to auto reload if we are in development mode. If we are in production, we don't really need to do auto reload. So we can do something like config is not production or config environment equals to development only then set the auto reload to true now we could of course store this in an enum class but for now this is okay and we can access the config object by simply injecting the dependency here the same way we did right here now we just need to add the environment configuration option to the config class so we'll open the config and let's add environment and this will simply be app environment and if it's not set we'll set to production by default now let's open our env file and simply add the app environment variable with the value of development and that should be good enough now let's refresh the page we confirm that everything is working and to make sure that this part is working what we can do is that we can simply update index.twig to something like home2 and this should automatically reload because we are in development. So if I refresh, we should see home too. And sure enough, we do. If we were not in development mode, then this would not update because the cache would not be cleared. So let's go back to public index.php and let's clean up these use statements here. And let's remove these comments. And it looks much cleaner and organized in my opinion. 
we've extracted the container logic and the definitions into their own files as well as the route definitions into its own config file. We've also moved the path constants into its own configuration file. And speaking of which, there is one more improvement that we can do here. As you can see, we're accessing the configs directory multiple times, and we can actually set this to be a constant as well. So let's go to the path constants and we'll simply define config path and set this to the proper configs path. Then within our public index.php, we'll just use config path constant this way. All right, so I think we are done for now, at least for this lesson. In the next video, we're going to continue with this refactor and we'll improve our CLI config and migrations PHP files right here. As you might remember, we added these two files for migrations to work and the migrations.php is just a configuration file that we can easily move into the configs directory. However, the CLI config is just there to run the migration commands. What I want to do in the next lesson is that I want to be able to use the doctrine commands to create entities and run migrations without having to use vendor bin doctrine migrations or vendor bin doctrine. In Laravel, you can do things like PHP artisan migrate to migrate the database. You can do PHP artisan make model, which creates a new model class and so on. I want to be able to do the same, but with doctrine and doctrine already has commands for it. We just need to build like an executable PHP script that is able to execute those commands. So in the next lesson, that is what we're going to be doing. Now you might be asking why we're covering this and why we're refactoring this and why we're spending so much time on this. What's the point? The point is that we will be starting to work on a project in a couple of videos and I want you to be prepared. These lessons are very much part of it. So technically we are already building the foundation of the project that it will be based on. Taking baby steps is important to not be overwhelmed with a lot of information. So play around with this, get comfortable and I'll see you in the next video. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and are looking forward to the project, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.